You know, Stephanie, I have seen more store clerks win gunfights in California <laughs> than in Houston, Texas. So bad. The Houstonians are already frustrated. Can we give them a break for one week? No. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. And I'm your Saturday co-host, Stephanie Widener, and today's armed clerk comes to us from California. Dark Star Gear is one of the few companies that I trust to make holsters that I wear. They make high quality appendix carry holsters for a variety of firearms manufacturers. Check them out at the link in the description. Late night at a convenience store, you can see the clerk sitting on the far left, kind of behind the counter. Three guys coming in here, two of them have firearms on them. And the first guy is one of them. You can see he looks like Kenny from South Park has broke bad. And he's gonna point a gun at our clerk who dips behind the counter. Now he's gonna think, oh, you guys come in here, I'm going around the counter. Second guy doesn't have a gun, third guy does, but so does the clerk. And he gets the first shot off and pops that dude in the face. And uh, he's gonna call for his buddies who at least drag his dumb butt out of there. And according to the news story that I've linked in the description that I'm pretty sure is the same one that this guy was listed in serious condition and the other two like dumped him at the emergency room and ran off and our clerk was unharmed. I know people say that California, you know, that sucks for self-defense. Their self-defense law is actually pretty good. It's their gun laws that suck. Right, and if you can get a concealed carry license in some of those counties, it's good all over. There is a lot of concealed carriers in California. People don't realize that. Mm -hmm. You know, Steph, I know that we make jokes about California and guns and gun control, but, but you know, the reality is California does have a very strong right to keep and bear arms culture and in your place of business, you don't even need a permit to carry a firearm in the state of California. Of course, unless you know, you're just an employee there and the owner doesn't want you to and those kinds of things. Post Bruin world, I'm sure glad this clerk had a firearm on him and I'm glad that we're seeing more and more people participate in the right to keep and bear arms. Yeah, their defensive laws have always been pretty good. And just if you go by straight population, they have a very large amount of concealed carriers. And if you can get that license, you know, in your county, you're, you're all over the place. So there are a lot of people carrying guns and we've been out there training quite a bit. I think uh, California gets written off a lot and laughed at a lot, but I'm glad to see, uh, I'm glad to see this guy took his safety seriously and had a firearm today. Yeah, and, and they at least have Judge Benitez there in California who's doing his level best to help the people of California out. Now, first guy's gonna show up and, and again, our clerk is just, okay, I gotta kinda help these guys, whatever. And I do wanna look at this guy, cause clearly A, he already has a gun out. Now, I don't know that the clerk can see that over the counter, but B, I mean, that's not a COVID mask right there, right? This dude has his hood up and a mask on that is absolutely a prelude to an armed robbery. You gotta see those kinds of pre-attack indicators and act as soon as you absolutely can to save your life. And in this day and age, even if it is a COVID mask, that's something that's gonna start, I I'm gonna pay more attention to it because I do know some people are still wearing them when they're a little bit, uh, you know, either worried about their own immune system or passing something on to someone else. But for the most part, people aren't wearing masks at all anymore. So even if someone comes in wearing an appropriate COVID mask, we see uh, that as a ruse quite often in videos now as well. Yeah, but not, not with the hood up. The hood up and the mask on is 100% a pre-attack indicator. I mean, it, it, this is just bad juju. Somebody is hiding their appearance and they're doing so because of pandemic era you know, restrictions and people required to wear masks. Don't fall for that anymore. It's, that stuff is over. Now, watch what happens. Our clerk does a great job of like dipping out of there and he just kind of drops a smoke bomb and, and disappears. And the funny thing, we see this all the time on camera stuff. The, the bad guy, first of all, I don't think is interested in shooting him, but won't shoot through the counter. And so if you can disappear like this and get behind something, even though it's concealment and not cover, it usually works. Yeah, and I think that's something a lot of people don't realize. If you're not a, a kind of gun person, maybe you don't realize that those bullets can go right through that barrier there and hit the clerk if that's what the bad guy wants to do. That's really only providing a concealment from his location. However, like you said, John, we see over and over and over again, the concealment works uh, just like cover 99% of the time. People just don't shoot through it in situations like this, which you can use to your advantage like this clerk did. I don't know if he got the gun from behind the counter. That's my guess. My guess is that he did. But you could also take it off your person here and that would be a great, you know, surreptitious draw. I don't love keeping guns behind the counter because if you're not right there, it's in a bad spot for that. But 
Now watch what happens to this next one. So our second guy, third guy shows up to do the same thing. And now our clerk pops up and you can almost see, like he's not looking at the sights of that gun, but he's only a foot or two away. And he's literally got the gun over the top of his head. The big thing I wanna talk about here though, it's that the first hit counts. The, that, that, that first one to put a meaningful hit of the other guy is the one who's going to win the gunfight 99% of the time. And so when people say, which one's more important, John, speed or accuracy, or do I want a balance? No, I don't want a balance. I want a big bucket full of both. I want all the speed I could possibly muster with all the accuracy I can possibly get because it's the first person to put a meaningful hit in the other guy who almost always wins. And both speed and accuracy are far easier to acquire than I think most people realize. And, it, and if you're not sure where your accuracy level is, where your speed is, head over to our second channel, Active Self Protection Extra, where we have all kinds of training, all kinds of resources for you to learn how to get that, that quick draw so you can be as fast as you possibly can. It's not difficult at all. It takes a very small amount of work to get your draw under a second and a half. We do it all the time in our live classes around the country. Uh, and with a little more work than that, you can get down to a second. Um, and I, this was a lot looking at these two guns pointed directly at each other. You know, gunfights are won and lost in tenths of seconds, and this was so fast. It really was. And, and you know, I sometimes hear this in some corners of the gunternet, the people say, well, you know, there's no timer in a gunfight. There's absolutely a timer in this gunfight. This gunfight has a timer. You just don't know what the part time is. So, so how fast do you want to be in this kind of case? Now, thankfully, he was fast enough. Now, of course, what happens here is that first hit initiates fibs in his attacker. Remember fibs, fudge, I've been shot. You can insert the F word of your choice there. We try to keep it a little bit family friendly here, not earmuff people too often. So, so listen, the first time you put a hit in someone else, it starts changing their behavior and that gives you opportunities to continue to get ahead. So that's why we say it's the first anatomically significant hit. And, and not only do we have fibs here, but for the guy in the blue sweatshirt stuff, we have fibs stuff, fudge, I'm being shot at. And that has pretty good effect too. Yeah, because this is, just looking at the factors, this is an exponentially difficult gunfight. Two, three guys, two guns, uh, you're not really able to see and move the way you would want to, kind of restrained behind that counter. So this is a really difficult gunfight, but just getting an effective round off quickly uh, changed things dramatically. And that's what we see over and over again with Fibs and Fibsa. So it's really something you want to be aware of as you're planning your defensive tactic. I also want to say, remember, what's the number one rule of gunfighting? Have a gun. You cannot have a gunfight if you don't have a firearm. You can get in a shooting, you can be the victim of an armed robbery, but you cannot get in a gunfight if you don't have your own firearm. So, so you're, and, and nobody's showing up to protect this guy. He's got to protect himself, and he does a really good job of that. Now, we also see something here that I think is fairly rare, and our dude's like, ah, heck, I've been shot, help me out here. And we see a little bit of honor among thieves. Now, now we don't see that very often, but these guys are still a danger. Recognize, I don't know what happened to the gun that this guy had. I don't know what happened to the guy of Kenny from South Park who came back around and he's out there in front as well. So just because you put a bullet in somebody doesn't mean they're completely out of the fight, even if you scared the heck out of him and hurt him. And the other thing our clerk did that was really good here was once he got the bad guys on the run, he did not chase them out of the store. We see that over and over again. You get that kind of predator prey driver, that you know indignation or, or you know righteous anger going, and they want to pursue the bad guys and just really put an end to the threat. And I can certainly understand that, but boy, have we seen some awful outcomes when people have made those choices. Stay inside the store where you have already won, you own that space, uh, get yourself to an even better space if you can and call for call for backup services. But as you you know think these things through, you can make these plans and do just as good a job as this guy did as covering your ass.